Hi, this is Precalc Racetrack Project, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to show you how to translate your re rectangular equations to parametric. So most of you have rectangular equations that you fit to this curve in Autograph or else if you're doing the Inspire CAS. Now what we want to do is try to put these into parametric form so that we can have one equation rolling right on top of another. So that's what we're going to be doing. So for example, what if in rectangular form I have these two equations? This one is y equals x squared. And then this one here is negative 5x squared plus 13.5. Notice that they match up here. And so we make sure that we have to try to do that. However, we want to take and make sure that we start at this point, which is 2, 4, and end at 3, 9. And then we're going to start this one at 3, 9 and end this one at 5, 1 we got to make sure that we end at those respective points. So here they are in rectangular form, both written out. Now what I want to do though is I want to change this over to parametric. So the shortcut method that it, you've been seeing is that you just let x equal to t. That's the easiest way to do it. Then y would be equal to t squared. If I do the same thing over here, x is equal to t and y is equal to negative 0.5 t squared plus 13.5. Voila, parametric done. However, this works for all of the values of this parabola. And we want to make sure though that we go from 2 to 3. And so we're going to have our x coordinates 2 to 3 and then our y coordinates will be the respective ones from there. So this would be 4 and this would be 9. Okay? And then this one we said that we wanted to start at 3, 9 and then we wanted to finish at 5, 1. So we need to incorporate those ideas into our equation. So this is not enough. What we do then is we go ahead and use this formula that we've started off with before. And as long as this is the t value on the x, I need to use this. So in other words, my x's are going to be changing over this interval. They're going to start at 2 and they're going to finish at 3. So for instance, if I say, OK, let's go two seconds. I want two seconds for my x's to go, or I'm sorry, my points to go. What happens now is that my v of x is going to be my distance that my x's travel. So this is two to three, so I increase by one, and then I'm going to divide by the time, which would be two. That would be my velocity, so to speak, in the x direction. I go one unit for two seconds. And if I put this into an equation, then this is going to be x is equal to, my x naught is my starting value, so that would be my 2. And then I'm going to go plus my velocity, and then I'm going to multiply by t. That would be actually my x equation. Now we might say, okay, let's do the y. Can we leave it as t squared? Well, if I leave it as t squared and I start at time 0, that would start me at y equal to 0. But I got y equal to 4. So what I need to do is I need to actually plug in the 2 into here somehow and get the 2 and get out a 4. Well, how do we do that? Well, wherever I see this t, I'm going to replace it with this x value. So it's t plus 1 half t quantity squared. So let's check this out. So if I do t, x, and y. If I start at 0, what happens? Well, that would give me 2. And then if I take this, I know inside parentheses I'm going to get 2, and then I'm going to square it, I get 4. That works. And then if I take uh, time 2, which should be at the end of that, if I take a 2 and put it in there, I'm going to get 3 here, and then I'm going to get 9 there. So it works. Okay? So this x if you just call it t, it's not going to work. You're going to have to, what I, what I call linearize it. It was linear before, but we have to use this equation right here to deal with it. Now, if you look at this one, this one, I'm going to start at time 2. And say, for instance, uh, I go from 3 to 5. Maybe I want to take 4 seconds. And so if I do this one, I'm starting this equation after this equation. So I have to do a t-chart and make sure things match up. So I'm going to say that x is equal to x naught plus vx t. This is going to be a different equation. If I look at this, I get v of x. My distance traveled. I increased by 2 for my x's. 
So that distance would be two, and then I'm gonna do it over four seconds. So here my velocity still is gonna be one half. So if I set this up and I linearize this, this is going to be x naught, which in this case now is my three, that's my starting value. Here's my change per unit of time and multiplied by the time, which would give me my total change right there. So that's going to be my x value or my x equation. Then to do my y. To do my y, I'm going to take wherever I see t and I'm going to plug this in. So this would be negative 0.5 times 3 plus 1 half t quantity squared plus 13.5. Okay, are we done? Almost, not fully. What happens is that since I'm starting not at time zero, I have to still translate this. And so that's what I'm going to do. So if I start this at time equal to 2, because I finished the last one at 2, so I need to start this one at 2. I need to translate this t by t minus 2. So this would be x is equal to 3 plus 1 half. Wherever I see the t, I'm going to replace it with t minus 2. And then my y value is going to be equal to negative 0.5, 3 plus 1 half. Yes, I need to change this one too. Quantity squared plus 13.5. That will give you your equation that's going to start at time 2. Let me close that off. This will give you your equation that will start off at time 2 and will move you forward. Let me do the table of values and see how that goes. Well, if I have t, x, and y, I'm going to start at 2. If I plug in 2 here, that gives me a 0, so this is a 3. That works. I know that inside here, all this is going to be 3 because that's equivalent to this x. And it's going to be negative 0.5 times 3 which is negative 1.5 plus this. I threw that parenthesis in there incorrectly, so I'm doing that wrong. So this inside here would give me a 3. I squared, I get 9. If I take half of 9, it's 4.5 negative. From that would give me my 9. That works. And if I put in time 4, which would be the end, end of the interval, remember I needed to get 5, that would give me a 2. So this would be overall a, this then would be, I said four, but it's six seconds because the whole interval is going to be four. So if I take six in here, that would be a four, and half of that's two, so this is my five. So this whole thing inside is going to be five, square it, 25. And then half of that is uh, negative 12.5, and then from 13.5 gives me my one. And so this gives me my points, and this works. So you have to do two things. First, you have to do the shortcut. Rewrite these things in uh, with x equal to t, and then here's your y value. And then you have to go ahead and linearize the x, and then take whatever that x is and plug it in for the t over here for my y equation. That should work. Now, this is only if you have a stra straight rectangular equation. If you are doing your circles or your ellipses, you don't have to do this linearization. All you have to do is the simple translation because these are already in uh, a form that's for our parametrics. Okay? So be careful with this. However, this is how you're going to get your rectangular equations to go over. So here's my first equation put in, and here's my second equation put in, and then this is the result. I did not use the Booleans, so it did not stop here for the first equation, but you can see the starting point for the second equation works out quite well. Okay, so uh, what you'd have to do with the Boolean, though, is you still have to translate these last two. So here's what the picture would look like. Let me show you one other thing that also has I'll try to show you the table in another video. However, this is a good way to get these uh, equations to hook up and make sure you use your Boolean operators with those. Thanks.